Hey, what's up everybody? Don't skip this part. Stay here. I lost my phone. My calendar went with it. Google did not back it up. If you have a trip on the books with me, please message me. Let me know what date it is. I have records of a lot of the people that paid. I don't have records of when the date was. Please let me know. Moving on. I got a message on Facebook that, that meant more to me than you guys will ever know. And what it is, is a picture of Haley with this awesome trout right here. It's a, it's a great trout. I'm very proud of her. I got a message. My 10 year old daughter is a fan of yours and loves watching your YouTube channel. She said she learned from watching you to pop her cork about every seven seconds and that's how she got her keeper trout this weekend. Dad says, not gonna lie, I got my limit using the same technique. Thank you for sharing your techniques. No. Thank you for watching the channel. I'm glad that it worked. I'm glad that it helped. That's what this channel is all about. I, I, I want everybody to benefit and gain from the years of, of, of work and frustration and success and everything that I've had. So that being said, let's do this. In the comments section, I want everybody, there's 1,750 subscribers plus those that haven't subscribed. Let's get in the comments section. Let's give, let's say way to go Haley. Uh, great job keep it up i mean 10 years old already catching trout love it and let's get on to the show so today's topic is a timely one it's mid-spring it's my favorite time of year it's right there with the birds working in the fall the big trout in the winter it is my favorite time of year right now however and what we're talking about today is shad. Now, along with the shad comes a CCA tournament. Why is a shad important for a CCA tournament? Well, a shad is a little tiny, small bait fish. And whenever trout, redfish, flounder, when they when they start eating, they can eat a bunch of these guys. So that's whenever you start seeing the, the redfish with the big, huge bellies. I mean, a 26 inches and weighs eight and a half pounds. You see the, the heavy trout, the heavy flounder. They are munching these little guys. They're gorging themselves. It, this, this is some of the heaviest redfish of the year right now. Now, along with the fish being heavy, whenever redfish feed on shad, they usually do it in schools. So the redfish, they school up, they push the shad together, and they attack them in the schools. So if you're looking for that tagged redfish, then you're gonna be fishing a bunch of redfish all at once. You, you're not fishing singles and doubles you're fishing a bunch of fish all at once, there's a better chance for that tagged redfish to be in front of you than later on the year whenever they're, they're scattered out. So I usually start seeing shad in March, April. They're little bitty, tiny clouds of, uh, they look like, I mean, it's a little bit bigger than mosquito larvae. And I start seeing them way back in the marsh. When I see that, I'm calling my friends, I'm excited. Hey, they're here, they're here, they're finally here. I mean, I'm like a kid at Christmas. As, they, as it goes on March, April, and now we're in May, they get bigger and bigger and bigger. And right now, the ones I'm seeing, they're maybe a little bit bigger than a dime. Whenever, whenever that happens, they're moving out of those way back waters. Now they're out in open back lakes. They're in the intercoastal, they're in the bay, and they're in the surf. So, so far, I've told you, hey, go find these little dime-sized bait fish and fish around them. How do, I, how do you find them? Uh, one of the number one indicators is the white shorebirds, especially a snow eager. The snow eager it has a black beak, black legs. He's very easy to tell apart from the regular egret with the, the yellow beak. Snowy egrets hate each other. They cannot stand each other. When if, if, if you see one, two, three, four, five of them all in a short stretch, there's a reason and it's typically because they're eating shad, glass minnows, small shrimp, that they, they will absolutely not hang out with each other unless there is a reason for them to be there. If you see two snowy egrets together, you're either seeing bait fish being eaten or you're seeing a bird fight, which is pretty cool to watch those guys go. So the shad, they they're little they're 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 bait fish, they're they're not they're not tough guys. Typically where you're gonna find them at the beginning is up against grass. So what I'm showing you here is is Along a grass line, it's you know you see the you see the pot of shad, but take note that there's multiple around it. So this is a bit a pretty big group, but they they break up. So when you, when you find one group, there's more around it. They're they're not hard to find whenever the water's real smooth like this. There's a 
you get that 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 nervous ripple just where they're at and what that is that's whenever the fish have have pushed them up into balls and they they went in defensive mode the way they defend themselves is i hope it's you and not me that, that's their defensive mode so when they're wadded up like this then you can bet you can bet your bottom dollar that there's some predator fish in the nearby area now what i'm showing you here is a group of shad that is not nervous whatsoever they're cruising through the grass life is good whenever you're driving around and see this in your boat you can bet that there's some predators in the area but they're not really keen on those shad you know when you find bait usually there's something close to it but but right now those fish aren't turned on to that the next thing i'll look for is not only is there shad on the grass line but then you'll see the fish they're, they're blowing up against the grass you'll see the grass and you'll see a, a, a sploosh or a splash on it trout redfish flounder all three of them they will cruise the grass lines and pin these fish up against the grass and attack them that way especially whenever the tides are up if the tides are out and the water isn't up against the grass then I'm going to be looking more, you know, in the middle of the water, away from the grass lines. If there's not enough, if there's not enough water for those those predators to get up against the grass, I'm not going to waste any time on it. If the tide's high, I'm absolutely going to be on that grass. Whenever you see the the flounder, I've seen flounder come full body out of the water just repeatedly over and over and over, gorging themselves on, on these shad. So what else do they look like? Whenever they're not on top of the water and making that nervous ripple, they quite often look like a cloud shadow. It's just a, it's a dark spot in the water. You can see them going down the intercoastal. You can see them in the bays, you know, especially offshore when the water's green. They look like they look like that dark cloud shadow. So now we're looking for cloud shadows. We're looking for nervous water, um, multiple wads of the nervous water. Now, the next thing that, that you really have to work on and develop your eye for is whenever they're actually getting sprayed and by sprayed i mean you'll see a group of them they'll just flash out of the water real quick and they'll land and then there was it was like there was nothing there so here's a close-up video of what they look like and then we're going to move on to what they look like further away so you can see that when they're further away it is quite a bit harder to catch that you can't be looking at your phone you can't be looking at your gps you have a split second to see it Quite often, whenever I look up and I think I see it, I'm gonna go ahead and go with, yep, that was real. I'm gonna move over there, I'm gonna check it out. Now, even harder to see is a single shad. So here's what a single shad looks like, and it looks nothing more than just a dime getting thrown in the water. It's bam, bam, it's quick. Whenever, whenever you learn to recognize this and see this, you are immediately going to see your catch percentage and your averages go up. Is it's something like us? Every one of us has been in the position where you know somebody said, "Hey, did you see that bait?" And we all said, "Oh yeah, we saw it." But in the back of our minds, we're going, "What is that guy talking about?" That is what the, this fella has been on the water long enough that that he catches it. These days, when I'm out fishing, if it happens, you know, straight 90 degrees away in my peripheral, I can almost hear it in my ears because I, I've, I've I've seen it enough and been rewarded by it enough that my eyes are just. They're just absolutely waiting on it. So once you get to that level, then your level of success should really should really start to climb. The the shad, they are a dead giveaway, but you have to pay attention. You have to spend some time on the water and train yourself to see what it is I'm trying to tell you here. The other thing is if the tide's high, or you know what I've shown you here is smooth water with you know they're really easy to see. Sometimes the tide's higher where they're not all the way up on top. Sometimes it's windier. To where you know the the top of the water is rough and it's harder to see the the nervous water that we're talking about that's whenever i'll move to slicks a shad will slick whenever i see these slicks i fish them aggressively much more so than seeing a slick in the bay if i see a slick in the bay i'm gonna go you know maybe give it a drift maybe give it a wade and then move on about my day whenever i'm seeing these shad slick i'm i'm gonna fish it aggressively i'm gonna fish it for a good while because there are multiple fish in the area, they're eating aggressively, and I am going to give it every bit of my attention. Now the way I like to fish shad is there's, there's multiple approaches that I have. One is I'm, I'm probably gonna be near shale or grass because they're, they're, they like to hide in one or two. If, if they're in the intercoastal, you know, I'm looking at shale and grass. Now if they're on the beachfront, 
then they've been washed out a creek or river or something and they're out there they're in they're in full panic mode these guys are completely unprotected i'm just going to find it out there i'm going to fish around them if i'm in the bay intercoastal back lakes i like to throw spinner baits at them spoons maybe um, a small flashy twitch bait i'll throw into it sometimes what i really like to do is focus the edges so if they're if they're if they're wadded up right here then out here on the edges is where the predator fish are pushing them from if I cast into that school, then my lure is amongst hundreds if not thousands of bait. So I, I'm hoping that they decide to bite my lure instead of all this bait around it. The, the law of averages isn't there as well. Now if I throw a spinner bait into it and rip it out of it, well then maybe that looks like a little group of shad that, that darted out and that'll trigger that fish to eat. But if you've got a group of fish and then this guy's way over here swimming, this redfish or trout or what whatnot, He's in the mood to eat because he's shoved them up. But he's out here kind of by himself. He's not looked at, looking at the shad and king on them. And I drop my lure past there and bring it past him. Well, now he's got more of a reason to, to grab that real quick. That That's an easy mill. It's right there in front of him. So I really like to focus the edges more so than the actual middle of the shad themselves. So next time you're running down the intercoastal through the bay, through the back lakes, and you see that little wad of nervous water, maybe stop and give it a shot. Fish around it, you know, observe what you see. If you don't catch any fish, just, you know, put it in your mind. Hey, saw this. This is what was around it. This is what it looked like. They sprayed, they didn't spray. Start making a log. I'm telling you, shad is, whew, that's the way to fish in the spring. So, hey, hope you liked it. If you like it, give it a like. Be sure and give Haley a great job. at a girl. Keep her going. She's 10 years old. She's out there killing it. I'm proud of her. Thank you so much for sending me the submission, and we will catch you on the next one.